Okay, so now that we've talked about um, the connection between beauty and truth and why beauty is important, and the connection between data and beauty and why we need to actually look for patterns um, because we're good at it, um, we need to talk about what makes visualizations beautiful. What are the rules that, that fit the form of data visualization so that we can get that content, those core nuggets of truth that we want to communicate? And this is important because all art forms have specific rules that you have to follow. Um, if you're doing art, you have to use specific color palettes that have different meanings. If you're doing music, um, there are specific chord combinations and chord progressions that work well, that communicate certain emotions. Um, and you can break those rules as long as you understand them and know why you're breaking them. And that's kind of a normal part of learning an art of something. Um, just like all of these humanities things, learning data visualization has a set of rules with it. Um, principles that if you follow, then you're going to um, use the correct form and then you'll be able to communicate the content well and generate truth and beauty at the same time. Um, so in your readings for today, you looked at a couple different kind of general definitions of what makes a great visualization. And so this list here <clears throat> comes from Alberto Cairo's book that you, um, I think you skimmed through this beginning part at the, this is chapter one, um, where he has five characteristics for what makes a great visualization. And the nice thing about this is it's, it's essentially a checklist. If you go through, if you see some graph out in the wild and then check to see if it's truthful, functional, beautiful, insightful, and enlightening, you can kind of grade the, the graphic that you see and see how, how great it is. Um, so what he means with these different principles here, truthful, it means that it's based on honest research. You're not trying to mislead people um, will, or willfully. You're, you're trying to be as honest as possible. Functional means that it is an accurate description of the data and it's built in a way that makes it so people can do meaningful things with it. So it's, it's useful. Um, if it's just pretty but it doesn't actually communicate something important, um, then it's not functional. If it's beautiful, that means it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, people in the general public can look at it and say, wow, that's neat. Um, it's attractive, it's intriguing, it brings you in, um, and it helps kind of grab your attention and communicate that truth more effectively. If it's insightful, it means it reveals something that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. Um, and so if we go back to that, that table that I had, um, the boring table with all of the numbers, that's not very insightful. But as soon as you plot it with the different distributions and showing how far the distributions are from zero to show significance, that is far more insightful than the table. And then enlightening means that um, it will change our minds for the better if we consume that data visualization. If we look at the chart and understand it and it's beautiful and we the aesthetics are all working and everything's clicking in place, then we can make better decisions and we can improve the world and improve ourselves because of the visualization. And so according to Alberto Cairo, that is kind of the, the checklist for what makes a good visualization. His is not the only list of definitions. Um, in Kieran Healy's chapter that you read, um, he had this quote from Edward Tufte, who is one of the inventors of modern data visualization today. Um, he has this really long-winded quote here. What really matters here, according to Tufte, is that um, having good graphics is um, you have well-designed presentation of interesting data. Um, another definition he has is it gives the viewer the greatest number of ideas in the shortest time with the least ink in the smallest space. So this is the idea of data density. You don't want to just have like a single line across the page and say, we have a trend. Um, you want to pack lots of information in there. And so if you remember that, that, that series of density plots that I had that shows the difference in, in donations for the nonprofit, I could have just had a single one, but that's not going to communicate a lot of information rich um, truth. Instead, I packed a whole bunch of different things in there and so the, the reader or the user could spend a lot of time looking at it and get lots more information out of it. Um, and then his, his final qualification is that you're supposed to tell the truth about data. Again, don't lie, don't purposely mislead people with your visualization. Um, finally, um, probably my favorite definition of a good visualization just because it's easier than the others it doesn't have five it just has like four and it's not this giant paragraph it's a list this comes from kieran healy's book um, a great visualization has good aesthetics so it follows design principles it looks good there are no substantive issues 
meaning that the data is not incorrect. Uh, the person making the visualization is not lying to you. Um, they're following all of the correct rules. Um, and then there are no perceptual issues. Um, this means they're not using design elements that trick your eyes and make it harder to interpret things. Um, when you look at the visualization, everything you're seeing is a true representation of that core content. It's not distorting anything. And then finally, there's honesty and good judgment. Um, you can assume or hopefully assume that the person making the visualization is, again, not trying to lie to you. They're trying to communicate some sort of truth. And if that's, if that's the case, then that's great. So if you meet these requirements, good aesthetics, no substantive issues, no perceptual issues, and check to see if there's honesty and good judgment in the source that creates the visualization, then you're going to have a good visualization. So one thing we can do is look at some examples of data visualizations that are generally bad to figure out what is wrong. So here's this beautiful pie chart here um, with like hundreds of different um, uh, species that are included in this pie chart. This was actually published in a scientific paper. It is awful. Um, one, it's a pie chart. And you'll learn throughout the semester that pie charts are not great, not just because they're ugly, but they, they have perceptual issues that are built in with them. Um, humans stink at recognizing angles. We're really good at recognizing like the distance of lines and the size of lines and the width of boxes. But trying to get angles and seeing what the difference is between this 4.5 and that 5%, just looking at it, there's no way to see if there's a difference. If these were bars that were side by side, you could see the five would be slightly higher than the 4.5 and you can tell there's a difference. But when it's just like a slab of a pie there, you can't tell. Um, the biggest issue here though is th there are like way too many pie slices here and it's impossible to tell what's going on. Um, this 4.5%, which of these genuses is it? Is it that one or is it that one or that one or that one? Like who knows? Um, it's, it's impossible to tell. So if we go through Kieran Healy's list, um, we have issues with perception um, because it has the pie slices. It has substantive issues. It has way too many variables mapped onto a single chart and it's impossible to distinguish them. And so we can't actually see all of the data. It has aesthetic issues. It doesn't follow good design principles. The colors are not, um, there's not a lot of contrast in the colors. It's hard to distinguish between them. Um, if you're colorblind and you look at this thing, extra good luck because um, half of the colors are going to be identical. And so that's going to be really hard to do. So the authors may have had, like, if we look at the honesty and judgment requirement, they probably are being honest and trying to exercise good judgment. But it doesn't meet the aesthetic requirements. It doesn't meet the substantive requirements. And it messes up with perception. So therefore, it is bad. If we look at this chart here, um, this one's fun because it's really hard to tell what's going on. This is, when you first look at it, it looks like um, this whole lower half of America is white. And all of the Asians live in central Maine and in northern Washington. And the all Hispanics live in Minnesota and Wisconsin and uh, New York. And it's really confusing. But that's not actually what it's showing. What it, They're trying to be all fancy and show a, a line chart showing that back in 1960, if you imagine that this is just a whole column here, 85% of the country was white, 10% black, some unknown percent Hispanic, and some unknown percent was Asian. By the time we got to 2010, 64% of the country was white. Um, and then in 2060, it's going to be um, or it's estimated that 43% will be white and 31% will be Hispanic. Um, the crazy thing about this is you could have communicated that without the map. The map is meaningless here. The map is actually distorting our whole perception of everything because we see a map and we think that it's supposed to be a map. It's really just a decoration. Um, if you wanted to communicate this, you could have three bars, like a bar here and a bar here and a bar here and have them colored within the different bars. So it, that messes with the perception issues. And so if, if we look at the, the perceptual requirement for Kieran Healy's good visualization checklist, that's bad. Substantively, the data is probably okay, but again, it's not being communicated in a way that makes sense. It's also missing numbers. I have no idea what this number for Hispanics should be in 1960 or Asians in 1960. Um, aesthetic issues, 
it looks cool it has a nice font uh, there's good contrast in the colors it doesn't have 10 billion colors as five um, so it, it looks well designed so props for aesthetics um, but the substantive side of it and the perceptual side of it is awful or if we look at this fun one showing the recidivism rate of prisoners released in 1994 and so if you look at this this should be a pie chart um, but if you add up all of the pie slices, they don't add up to one. They add up to some big number. They're all basically 60%, so 60 times 5. That's like 300% here. My favorite part about this graph is that one of the wedges is actually the handcuff. Um, this right here represents 67% of released prisoners, um, which is basically the same as the drug offenses a wedge and none of that makes sense. So if we go back to our list from Kieran Healy, the aesthetic side of it, it is cute, I guess, but not very helpful. Like uh, it has like handcuffs as nice colors, but it's 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 not a great design. It doesn't actually help you understand anything. I have no idea what this is supposed what this is supposed to show. Substantively, there are numbers, but I again, I have no idea what the numbers mean. Um, perceptual issues it's using pie slices which again is bad because we can't perceive them it's using a handcuff shape which means nothing and so like we can't actually perceive anything from this and so that's that's bad this is a, a good example of a horrible data visualization not just horrible because we look at it and we say ew it's horrible because we look at it and we know that there are aesthetic issues there are substantive issues and there are perceptual issues um, and so that's what makes it bad. It, f it breaks all sorts of rules for the form of data visualization. One thing that is important, though, is you can find good visualizations. We're not just looking at bad ones, even if there's no numbers behind them. So this right here, this flatten the curve graph, um, for the past two months, we've been um, looking at this all over the place on the news and online. Um, at this point, it has kind of taken over um, our vocabulary. We are staying at home. We are social distancing. Um, three months ago, very few of us knew what social distancing meant. We had no idea what flattening the curve meant. We're not epidemiologists, but at this point, we understand why we are social distancing, and we understand why um, why we're trying to flatten the curve. It's to to keep the number of cases that need to be hospitalized under the healthcare system capacity, so that people who need hospitalization don't die while they're trying to get into the hospital. And so this has been the whole point of social distancing. And the cool thing about this is this graph, this is one I made in R, um, and we'll show the code later in the semester how to do this, um, was actually originally created back in early March by a graphic designer at The Economist, um, where she uh, laid out this, this idea of just like, if we don't social distance, we're going to get a ton of people sick all at once. If we do social distance, it's going to spread out over time. Um, and it's a super simple form of data visualization. This epidemiology professor here um, has called this um, one of the most important pieces of science communication of our time here. Um, the graph itself is changing minds and it is saving lives. And so this is, this is a, a good instance of a data visualization that is uncovering deeper truth because it follows all of the uh, the core principles of good graphic design. Aesthetically, the original one has good colors, it had good fonts, um, it looked nice. Uh, substantive issues, it's not lying about the data. This is what would actually be forecasted if we social distance and this is what would be forecasted if we didn't. Perceptually, um, lots of people don't understand how density curves work. That's kind of a more advanced statistical concept. But even then, um, even though these are density plots, which are trickier, um, it is fairly readily apparent that like, because they've added this line showing the healthcare system capacity, that we don't want lots and lots of cases to go. And so even if you don't know like the calculus behind the density curve and the area under the curve or any of the math behind it, you can tell that it's going beyond the healthcare system capacity and we don't want that, that's bad. Um, and so because of that, like um, it, it fits with perceptual issues. Like it has good perception, we can understand it readily. Um, and so because it meets all those requirements, 
um, it's been very powerful. It's taken over our discourse for the past two months because of kind of the power of the graphic itself. And so we care about this. Um, the visualizations that we make, we're, we've been making fun of these things. Yeah, that's great. Um, if you can make good visualizations, you can communicate truths a lot more effectively and you can change lives and you can change policies and you can fix uh, big social issues um, because of your attention to communication and to the humanities behind creating these visualizations. And so that's why we care about this stuff. Um, it is important.